Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Beyond the Barbell with your hosts, Lard Hannah Robinson, Nicole Zenobia Graham, and Lou Faustin. Thank you guys so much, as always, for continuing to support our channel. You know, as, as much as y'all give into us, we can give right back to you guys. So we want to just say thank you always. Continue to like, comment, share, you know, and follow us on our YouTube channel. Yes, yes. Uh, today, we are so excited. We have the luxury of not only talking to somebody who has been in a uh, figure, but she has a journey that's taken her through several divisions. You're going to want to sit down and really soak in this episode. We're <laughs> speaking to none other than Mayla Ash. Oh, guys, Olympian, yeah. figure competitor. Not, I mean, I'm sure a lot of y'all know this, but we're going to actually dive into her journey from figure to who she has become today. So, Mela, we got a question for you. Okay. Why figure? Okay. Um, the reality is, is that figure was the first um, division that I actually that I actually became aware of um, competing. Um, when I first um, started, which was back in 2013, the whole journey started because I broke my toe. So I'm like, I broke my toe in some kind of deranged accident. We won't go into that. But <laughs> the reality is, is that um, doing some kind of fitness competition was something I always um, wanted to do. I'm like, when I was in track and field in college, me and my team, we always said that when we got finished with this, we're going to jump and do some fit, you know, fitness competition. But along the lines, you know, life happens and you lose that journey. Broke my toe. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get back to my bucket list. So went to a show, the Europa in 2013, and I saw the first division I saw when I got there was figure. And it was beautiful to me. You know, I'm like, it was, it was muscular, it was feminine. And that's how I always envisioned, you mm -hmm. know, the sport and everything. So um, the funny part though, is that because I was always just a little muscular because of track and field, I've, I've been running track since the fourth grade. So because I was a little dense, I was, I was, well, I came into figure on the border, as they always want to tell you, you're kind of borderline. And so I was like, oh, okay. But I love my heels. <laughs> right. So they was like, we're coming out with a new division is women's physique. I said, oh, okay. They was like, it's for the more muscular. And so I was just like, they was like, you don't have to put on a little more mass. I was like, okay, that shouldn't be a problem. I was like, they was like, and you can't wear heels. And I was like, what now what? I'm like, oh, oh so I, I need to wear shoes. They was like, no, you got to be barefoot. See, I have OCD and that's a whole nother journey we could talk about later down the line. But that's how I got into figure is mm -hmm. that I initially was going to go into women's physique. I was on the border, so I was going to try it. But they told me I needed to be barefoot. And the idea of getting on stage with no shoes on and all that, I said, no. Yeah. But, the, but I, when I first did my first show, Mm -hmm. I fell in love with figure. I'm like the flow, the grace, the beauty of it all. I'm like, and to do it in heels, because mm -hmm. that's something I always tell people. I'm like, I always felt like muscle was beautiful on women. I'm like, you know, and it took the general population to jump onto that bandwagon, but, but that's what it was. It was just like, that's how I got into it. And, you know, after I did my first show, I placed fifth and they were like, you know, you could really do well if you mm -hmm. focus on what the division actually needs, you know, put a little effort into it and everything and move forward. And so, you know, I actually put together my own program, did my first show, listened to the feedback I got from the judges and then spent like a couple more, you know, um, a little more time getting into what I needed to do. And then I came back around and I qualified I did a show, like I did a show, I did my first show. And then like five weeks later, I did um, what they used to call the Texas Naturals. They changed the name of something, something different, but, and I qualified for Team Universe, which is what it was called back then. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay. So, you know, I focused on what I needed to do, did another show, went to Team Universe, 
earn my pro con. So it was just like, and that's how I started my journey. And it was just like, and it was right at the time period that the sport was really evolving. So everybody knows, what did you earn your pro card in? Oh, what, which category? Exactly. Figure. Yes, I was only, when I first started, I only did figure. So okay. I, I was never one of those individuals that did multiple divisions because mm-hmm. I wasn't an amateur. I only did three shows. I did my first show. I did my qualifying show. And then when I found out that Team Universe, I mean, Texas Naturals only qualified me for Team Universe. Mm-hmm. They were like, you need to do another show. So you'd be qualified. So I, then I did Ronnie's. I did the oh, Ronnie's wow. Pony show. So I did those three shows, but I went to nationals like mm-hmm. July 4th, you know, 20, I'm like 20. Look, it was just, it was, and that's what it was. I did, I did um, Team Universe. I swept all my classes and I am a pro car. So it was Ooh. just like, and the thing that was horrible for me is that everything that everybody learns like now, you know, like what you guys are doing with this, 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 this podcast or YouTube channel and all the seminars that we have, we didn't have that back in 2013. So imagine how it was for me learning the sport, learning the guidelines on the pro stage. Mm-hmm. My first year was a freaking nightmare. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, magazines back there. We, we can go online and just look up NPC News Online to look at our pictures and everything and just compare and see what they want and all that, but it's much different. It's so much, much different, you know? And so that's what it was. I'm like, but that's how, that's how I got started. And so, you know, it was always my desire to go to the Olympia. And so, and being an athlete as I am, just, I was just kept driving towards that. But that's the whole thing. I started in figure. I never did anything else when I jumped in the figure and I loved it. I absolutely what? loved it. So, and you tell. Tell us what, or tell the viewers what it means whenever you say, you know, you said the judges said you were borderline. Like a lot of people say or think that they're borderline, you know, figure or women's physique or even they would figure to wellness. But what gives a person, you know, that, that, that borderline, you know, you are absolutely right. Well, why am I borderline? Well, before you do that, do you, do you want to show her photo? So we can yeah, see. Yeah, absolutely. We, you know, uh, let's take a look at uh, what Mela looks like as figure. Mm-hmm. And then let's uh, also take a look at her transition to women's physique. And then, of course, the transition into women's bodybuilding. Yes. So the thing is that when I did my first show, what a lot of people don't understand, and they, when they explained to me that I was borderline, what people don't understand, what a lot of competitors get confused about, is that when they say that you are borderline, you're, you're toggling between two divisions. They're talking about your muscle maturity and muscle density. And so there are so many people that get confused because they come in too lean for a division. And they're, you know, they're telling people, oh, well, you, know, you need to soften up or you need to, you need to dial that back. They're like, oh, well, obviously I need to jump over to the next division because I'm, I'm borderline. No, no. Being too lean or being too depleted, being too dehydrated, because we know some people, you know, how they get ready for shows. That's a whole nother, you know, episode you guys can handle. But, (laughs) (laughs) but, you know, there's, but borderline is when you have muscle bellies, muscle bellies that are so round and defined that you are starting to show more attributes from of of the other division. Now you still have some of the attributes of the current division you have. So that's what it was. I had the attributes of the current division I had, you know, um, but my biceps and triceps were too developed. I'm like, my back had too much definition in it. They had too much separation. And so, but, and so that's what it was. And so a lot of people don't understand that is that when you get that kind of feedback, the judges are telling you that key components of your physique, of your body, are starting to show more more of the attributes of the other division, but you still have all the key attributes of your current division. And so people don't understand that when you get that, and if you wanna stay, like if I wanted to stay in figure, then what that meant is that I had to stop training my arms. I had to stop training my my chest because I had pecs. 
I yeah, had right. texts with that were shredded. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, you know, no more bench press for me. You know, I'm just like my back, you know, I had my, you could see the separation of the rhomboids from the lats and everything. So that meant that even though I needed to have a lat spread, like I need to have wide lats, I couldn't have that much density. So that's the whole thing is that so many people make the mistake of getting their feedback and not understanding the feedback. So then what happens is that they don't train for the division that they're trying to be in. They just continue training that they want to. You know, there's a lot of women that they love the way their arms look. Well, guess what? You know, I have a wellness um, competitor. I have to explain to her. Oh, but I, I love the way your arms look. Yeah, but you don't supposed to have biceps like mine. So you can either go ahead and keep training your arms and we can move you to another division or you can train for the division that you want to compete in. That's what it is. Most people think it's it's politics. No, you didn't pay attention to what the judges told you or you didn't understand the critique that you had. And so anyway, so that's what it was. I had too much muscle density and the leaner I got, the more defined I would look on stage. And so that was what my problem was in the figure. When I came out on stage by myself, like Zambonia, woof, I would flow. I would flow like music on stage. It came to the lineup. I looked like an Amazon next to the other women because the longer I was under those lights, <laughs> the harder I would get, the more defined I would get. And it was just like, I'd be in that center slot. And all of a sudden, after a couple of turns, they were like, yeah, we're going to move the, the pseudo sea woman to be competitor over to the side. <laughs> But anyway, so that's what it meant. I'm like, to answer your question completely, because I kind of went squirrel moment. So I'm going to come back to it. To answer the question completely, when they say that you have your borderline, the truth of the matter is that means that you're holding key attribute, body attributes that are starting to show more of the characteristics of the other division. And if you want to stay in the division that you're in, then you need to adjust your training that you don't continue to allow that to push you out. So, right. gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. That definitely mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm, I'm one of those, <laughs> <laughs> so I know exactly how you feel. There's a lot of people. They don't get no bigger up top now. Don't get right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they, they don't see figure as a bodybuilding, you know, category. Yeah. Like, how do you feel about that? Because we, us three, we we already know how we feel about figure. Like, we literally think yeah. that we're real life transformers because, like you said, if you don't meet the criteria of you know whatever category you're in, then you're not going to get picked. Now, figure, you know, you have to have your upper and your lower body matching. You know, it has you can't be huge on top and small on the bottom. You can't be small on top and huge mm-hmm. at the bottom and huge at the top. So that's why I feel like figure is you know a bodybuilding category because you literally have to bodybuild. You're literally building your body according to this category. But a lot of people, you know, in this world don't think that figure is a bodybuilding, you know, category. What do you feel about that? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to disagree with you because the reality is, is that when it comes to all the divisions, uh, well, before wellness came in, but when it came to all the divisions, more, more times than not, when I was interacting with people, um, people were mainstream people, people, other competitors and everything, they always felt, now I'm gonna get, I, I, there's gonna be some comments <laughs> when I say this, but they, more people would say that by the bodybuilding stopped at figure. People didn't view bikini as bodybuilding, but figure was viewed as bodybuilding. But I feel the problem that supports what you're saying is that on the amateur level, you would have a lot of individuals who would jump into figure undeveloped because they were too big for bikini. Mm -hmm. So the mindset, and so it's a good thing that they allow the crossover, but I feel that one of the things that is hurting our sport is that on the amateur level, we don't get amateurs to understand that, no, you you don't expect yourself to look like Zambonia at the Olympia or any, because she's on the pro level. She's put in the time. She has cultivated, she has transformed her body. You just started lifting weights a year ago. 
this is a journey. It doesn't happen overnight. So you have right. a lot of people, they jump on stage and somebody's got to win at a show. Somebody has to win. So you have a bunch of people who are jumping in and they're crossing over from bikini and figure. They right. win, they, they play tired figures. Oh, I'm a figure competitor. No, you're probably bikini. You just haven't put in the time to get yourself conditioned. But if you want to be figure, you need to lift. And so they're still lifting the way that they lift in bikini, but they're not taking off that fat because right. they have the general, they have the general shape, they have the form. Because we've all seen it. We've all been at the gym and you're working out, and somebody walks in and just change, tell the truth and shame the devil. You see somebody walk past and you're just like, well, oh, that'd be a good figure competitor because the way their body is shaped, you know, it's just like right. you know, yes. 15 pounds yes. <laughs> with a cap yes. on those shoulders. She'd be a good competitor. Oh, that'd be a good, you know, woman's physique. If she yes. just do this, you know, you just, because we know what they're looking for. You know what the shape, the symmetry has to be, but that's what it is. I'm like, from the pro level, they don't believe that. I'm like, I honestly feel that. When I was competing in women's figure and women's figure, like there's a man's figure, just cut that. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was in figure on the pro level, nobody thought that, you know, mm -hmm. but when I used to go to the amateur shows, that's when I used to hear the feedback, but that's what the feedback was relating to is that they would come in unconditioned. It was just like, how are you two weeks out? And, you know, and you still getting a cheat meal, but you still technically got 15 pounds to lose, you know, but you jump right. on stage, but you won. So you don't see anything wrong because you won. And so right. you're continuing with that package and nobody's right. giving people that tough love, I feel, that needs to happen in this sport. I, yeah. So I, you're continuing to allow this to, you know, and then it's going to the national level. Mm -hmm. Like this last nationals. Oh, whoa, whoa. We don't even go there. Yeah. yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, yeah. Thank you. you know, I, I will admit with the, the last nationals, um, I will say, and I, I mean, and not even just the last one, I think a few of them, you know, there are those stick out athletes that you're like, okay, they're, they're going to do something with it, you know, when they get into the, you know, pro rankings. But a lot of these athletes, I'm just like, I don't want to say not impressed, but it's just like, what is going on with the division? I'm not seeing what I'm used to seeing, right. the caliber of athletes getting yeah. ready for national shows. So it's just a select few versus well, having a good amount. Well, that's how I feel. And, and I, I, I agree with you, Melee, in that I like that there's the crossover, but I don't, I might be the only one saying this on this panel, but I don't like people who can win their pro card in multiple divisions because then you, you get confused. And it's like, for me personally, it's like, what exactly, the judges, you, there's a clear difference in, in, in what figure and what physique and what bodybuilding should be, right? But if you have somebody who's winning their pro card at the same show in the same division, doesn't that cause confusion? What's your, what's your take on that? Mm -hmm. See, this is my thing, because you also have to remember, number one, somebody has to win. No matter right. what, somebody has to win. And so you, I understand what you're saying and I agree to a certain extent, but the problem is, is that since the coaches on the national show, I mean, the, um, the, the local shows mm -hmm. are not, I don't feel like a lot, because you have so many people who are, they're competing and then overnight they become prep coaches. And so they're not understanding the guidelines and they're not doing the research like some of the more um, seasoned coaches do. They used to look at the national shows. They used to look at the pro shows and they understood what, right. what, was, what was needed. And then they cultivated their athletes on the local level to get, we need to build your body so that you look pre-pro when you hit nationals. Yeah. But right. now what's happening is that they're going to these local shows, five people show up, the pandemic just did a thing to our sport. Five people show up at the show. You win overall. And all of a sudden, oh, I'm nationally qualified. Yeah. But are you qualified to go to nationals? Well, and see, that's, that's what's not happening. And that's what I always say. Just because you were invited to the party didn't mean you show up. Well, then yeah. maybe, maybe that's, to make this, this sport more competitive again is you win the overall, but you don't get your pro card. No, 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 no. I'm talking about on the local level. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, maybe, 
they yeah. win. They win their. They win their. They win. They, they win their class. They win their. Um, yeah. their. You know, been pro so yeah. long. It's class. They, they win the class. <laughs> yeah. You know. Now, mind you, in their class, there was only three of them. Yeah. You know. So just because you won out of those three, didn't mean that you had a national mm-hmm. level body. body. Right. Right. But I mean, now you have these coaches. They're more concerned about how many athletes can I get to nationals. Yeah. How right. many athletes can I be at nationals with, yeah. and I can post yep. online about. You yeah. know, yeah. they're not focused on, you know, back in the day, it was like, oh, yeah, you won, but you're going to get stopped at Nationals, so we're going to wait a year. That's yeah. what yeah. coaches right. tell people, right. you know? That's so now what happens, you get them going there, and it's the same thing on national, at the national level that's happening on the amateur level. Right. Somebody right. has to win. So yeah. maybe the person who won in the figure division, maybe they were more figure. Mm-hmm. But right. they had the conditioning, they had better conditioning than the rest of the physique d- competitors. Right. So what are you going to do? Because let's be honest, phys- physique is a more muscular, more divine, more defined, right. denser version of figure. Yeah. Right. So right. that's what the problem is. If you're having people that are showing up and they're under the impression that because they are bigger. Right. Oh, I'm physique. No, you just haven't got the fat off. You haven't got all the fat off. Right. So just because right, your right. fat has a good you know, shape like to that. it. Because yeah. so that's what the problem is. Right. Yeah. So what you're saying is, you know, because of the the amateur level, they're not really taking, you know, their preps as seriously. <laughs> it's it's carrying over into the national level, which then carries over into the pro level because the pro level. since fans stop coming for the amateur you know, pr- fans stop coming and watching um, figure amateurs and nationals, which then they stop watching and talking about figure pros, th- which makes us feel like they're not taking us seriously, you know, as professional bodybuilders, because we're like, hey, we're just as much as a bodybuilder as anybody else on this stage. Don't take our stages away from us. But then it's like, OK, y'all are. But where are the amateurs for y'all that are supposed to be, you know, wanting to be y'all and, and advance to be pros? And that makes sense. It makes so much okay. sense that. But oh, Lahana, okay, since you tapped upon that, I'm like, because um, I myself, what happened to you guys at the Arnold's, I think it was it was inevitable. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's because of everything that happened. Yeah. See, there, it's not that they're, and see, the thing is that it's not that they're not taking your division seriously. It's mm-hmm. not that they're not taking the pros seriously. But be honest with yourself. Every <laughs> Arnold from the last four years, they're the same people. Mm-hmm. Because you have that problem on the pro, the amateur level, and even like you said, on the national level, coming onto the pro level, because you're having that same problem, the ones who are taking it serious are the veterans, and it's mm-hmm. the exact same faces every year. You're not getting right. any fresh, you know, something new that can stand up to what's on stage. Mm-hmm. And so that's what the problem is: is that, and see, I'm like, I'm from I, before I retired. Um, or just walked away from corporate America. I was into marketing and promotion. And so somebody asked me that. They was like, oh, it's not fair. I'm like, no, it is fair. I said, like, I have a lot of figure friends. I love them to death. But what happened to them in Arnold is fair because at the end of the day, it's business. Yeah. And so right. if people, are, I said, if your fans, if your fans might be showing up for mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. but they're not going to fill that whole auditorium. So exactly. if you don't have other fans showing up, if you don't have new people because they want to see a battle, mm-hmm. you want to see a battle. You want to mm-hmm. you want you want to see if there's a chance that something something's going to be you know just going to be mixed up. Right. But if nothing yeah. new is coming to the stage, it's like running. You love your favorite movie. At some point, yeah, I don't need to watch it this time. I know it's coming on, but you watching it 40, 50 times after a while is just like I'm I'm okay if I miss it this time. And that's what what happened to your division. It's what happened to currently women's bodybuilding. You know, people were so mad about that. But if you look at the women's bodybuilding on the amateur level, Mm -hmm. it's the same thing. They don't, they can't get lean enough. So they jump into women's bodybuilding. Somebody has to win. So they win, but they don't win because they came in with like the right conditioning with the right right muscle belly. They were just too big for women's physique and not right. too big as in muscular. Sometimes it's just too big, you know, but you can right. tell they got some muscle underneath it. It's just like, okay, you need to lean that out 
So you can see where you're at. But everybody's doing always the same thing because a lot of coaches are always worried about how many of my, my athletes can get some hardware. Or the athletes exactly. are like, let me see who shows up to check-ins. Ooh, there's only three people for women's bodybuilding and check-in. Let me jump into that division. Ooh, there's only right, five right. people in the figure division. Let me jump into that. So people are chasing the hardware. They're right, not really right. about the sport. And so that's the whole I mean, thing. So when they don't win, they don't come back. They don't come back like us. We don't do well. Yeah. So we come back. We come back harder. We come back stronger. We come back right, better. Right. Yeah. And it's they're just like, let me go to another I mean, division where I can get some hardware. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's what, you know, that's what I had been saying, you know, before, again, the reason why, of course, we started um, Beyond the Barbell, um, not only to just bring awareness of the figure division and teaching the history and what figure is and just giving us a platform in general, but to also bring the popularity back into the NPC because that is the future of what the division is. Now, if we don't have competitive NPC athletes, then we're never going to progress as a pro division. And that really boils, that's really what it boils down to. The issue is that we don't have that caliber of athlete in the NPC right now. There's a few, not to say that we don't have them, but we don't have enough is a problem. And right? that's exactly what it is. There's not enough. There's not enough. You're right. And I think, I think another thing is people don't like, to, again, we don't like to fail, right? But we also like to rush the process. And what you said rang true with me because my first NPC show, my before the Arnold's, um, was six years ago, right? And that was the only one that I had before winning my pro card, right? I got second place. There were two of us in the class, so I got last, all right? So it mm -hmm. took me, we, and then I qualified for nationals, which I was like, how so? If I got second place in my category, how am I gonna beat these girls in nationals? So we took six years of off season to build. Just because I wasn't mm -hmm. on stage doesn't mean I wasn't competing, you know what I mean? Like I wasn't mm -hmm. doing my homework. A hard pill to swallow. Take time off the stage, Take stop competing, but still do your work. Right. I know people who compete every three months on the amateur level. And it's like, how are you gonna grow when you are always dieting? It doesn't work yeah. that way. So I think that's yeah. another thing. It had to, it resonated with me and I had to swallow it. And I had to say, you know what? I got to get better. We got to get better. Let's get off this stage and let's build and do what we got to do. So it's tough love. So, you know, it's, it's been some truths, Mela. You might have to do a, 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 a real talk segment with Mela every month. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but that's what it is. I'm like, and see this, this is why everybody's always laughing because I'm always like, you need to respect your journey. Respect. Yeah. That's, my, that's my tag. Like, respect your journey. Because a lot of people don't understand is that, like you said, you took, you took years to build. For me, when I wanted to cross over, it took me eight months. Why? Because I already had, I was borderline. And so a lot of people, the, especially the people that they follow, they see that journey. They're just like, oh, well, if that's how, and that's what I, I always, and that's why I always give tough love when people DM me. Well, you know, I noticed that you qualified and you turned pro in three shows. And I tell them, oh, that doesn't mean you. I said, I was a unicorn. That doesn't always happen. I said, because people, I tell people, what you don't understand is that I started competing in bodybuilding. And well, technically 2012. I'm like, I got my pro card in 2013. At the end of 2012 is when I started competing in bodybuilding. I said, but I was lifting weights starting Right. From the sixth grade, I was like, I was already building. I said, but I was building for power and performance. I said, the right. only thing that happened is when I jumped into bodybuilding is I started building for aesthetics. I said, you just got into the gym a year ago. You are not me. My journey is not your journey. There you go. And so I tell people, if you're not willing to put in the years, then don't be angry that you don't get what I got. Yeah. It's not right. politics. You're not willing to put in the work. This is not a right. microwave kind of sport. It's not. Right. And that's what the problem is, is that people are too many people are looking at when Zambonia, she does a show and maybe she places third. And then two weeks later, she wins. Mm -hmm. Well, she had minor things at this level. The slightest thing could make you from first 
to 10th. Yeah. You right. make those tweaks. And so people don't understand it. And that's what they don't get is just how much of a difference those little changes can make. How much of a difference what the judges say you need to improve. You focusing just on that before you jump on stage. And it's like yeah. what you said, Lou, there's too many people who they ignore what the judges say. They just, they're going to get the, I'm getting on stage again. Did you make the changes the judges said? Then why are you getting on stage? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know, and the mindset, everybody's always going with that mindset. Well, you never know who shows up. It shouldn't matter who shows up. Because right. people are always like, do you care about who shows up? Mayor? No, I'm bringing the best package to win. And if right. I don't have the best package to win, it doesn't make a difference who shows up. Right. Either I bring in my best that I can bring in that moment or I'm not. And I'm not one to lie to myself. You know, I tell, right. oh, you got cheated. No, I didn't. I saw those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I saw those pictures. I was like, you know, I'm not, I tell me, I, I'm not mad one bit. I saw, you know, but, oh, you right. got cheated. You know, I'm like, thank you for that. But no, I didn't. And yeah, I'm quick right. to explain to people, I didn't win that show because of this, 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 and this. If you yeah. go back and look, and not looking with favor, but the mm -hmm. truth. I said, yeah. look based on what the guidelines of that division is looking for. Right. And, if you, and so that's the thing that us as athletes, we need to start doing. Mm -hmm. We need to start, okay. if we're gonna put those, we're gonna put those pictures out there, we're gonna celebrate our wins. I'm not saying you gotta, cause I'm not one of those people that I get on Instagram. I didn't, it didn't show the way I wanted to. And so I'm, no, look, I'm, I'm upset that I didn't win. I don't want to talk to anybody. Get over it. You know, I'm like, but the truth <laughs> of the matter, <laughs> I'm not into that whole thing. I need to explain to people. I didn't win. Okay. So I'm yeah. not going to sit up there. I didn't win because I didn't, I didn't bring the best package. There's nothing to yeah. explain. I, or right. the people who get angry and they want to put up pitch, comparison pictures. Don't grab your best moment and then put it up talking about, you know, I don't understand how I didn't win. Look at all your pictures. Look at all of them. Yeah, we, got, we, got, we, got, we, need a, we really might need a real talk segment with you because, I mean, this is cutting deep, bro. <laughs> well, but that's the whole thing is that Let me go hide my athletes, pictures. We need, to cut, we need to start cutting deep yeah. with our fans. Yeah. yeah. Because they with love us. And I tell my fans, I love those who follow. I said, I appreciate you following me. I appreciate you supporting me. I appreciate you following my journey. My journey. But Ooh. don't tear her down because she brought the better package. Mm -hmm. right. I'm just like, I, I did the best that I could do in that moment. It wasn't my show. My body, my, my journey, it just did not sync up with that show. And then right. I explained to them why I shouldn't have won. And see, that's the whole thing is that we don't want to take a hard look of ourselves. Mm -hmm. we, want to, we want to get drunk off of that, that Instagram, you know, accolades, mm -hmm. you know, that we start drinking that Kool-Aid, like I should have won. No, you shouldn't have. You got cheated. No, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. Yeah. No, I no. This. You know, and so that's the whole thing is just like we <clears throat> we we need to really we need to really get to that point, though. You know, we right. need to start having that hard talk, not only um, with ourselves, but we need to start having real talk with those who follow us, who compete mm -hmm. and just fans who are, who are following so that because if we don't start educating them, they're not going to understand. That's right. why they're always screaming that, oh, it's politics. Oh, they got cheated. I can't believe she lost her. You should drive me crazy with figure. Yeah. Especially when I came out of figure, because you get a I different see. view when you're not in there. And it's mm. evolved more, you know, as the times have went on. So figure right. when I was in figure is much different when mm -hmm. I, you know, compared to now than when it was then. But the point of the matter is that I always tell people, it's just like, like there was one person that was like, oh, Zamboni needs to cross over. No, she don't. No, she don't. She is not one's physique. No. I was like, and I tell people, and so I tell people, I was just like, she is supposed to be conditioned. That's called conditioning. I was like, and she has muscle bellies. I was like, don't get me wrong, you got some shoulder caps on your desk, but we're gonna keep that on the down low. <laughs> but but you but you're supposed to have those shoulder caps. But the point of the matter is I tell people is just like you need to understand the difference. Most fans don't understand the difference between muscle density. Mm -hmm. And so I tell people, I said, Zambonia, I said, my sis is conditioned. She's supposed to be conditioned. I said, but when I was in fig, when I was in women's physique and when I was in women's bodybuilding, that's why I always make it a point that I stand by my girls because I always want to post a picture. She does not need to cross over to women's physique. She is conditioned, but her muscle bellies are not 
mature enough to com be competitive in this division. Just because you can see separation on her, there are certain areas of all of our bodies that are naturally going to separate more than others, that are naturally going to shred up more than others. You can't do anything about that. And I'm so thankful that they have the judges understanding that. You know, but the point of the matter is that we need to start educating those who are following us because there are a lot of athletes on the local level who get pressured because they're listening to that. And they're thinking, mm -hmm. oh, well, obviously this is why I need to cross over because I'm conditioned like Zimba. No, honey, you've taken too many diuretics. That's not conditioning, mm. you know? And so, but that's a whole nother. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you know, no, we're going we right. we to put a pin on that one. So we got a lot of pins over yeah, here. We definitely going to talk about it. You know, well, 2023. You know, uh, come back. And we're gonna grab that pen. And we're gonna talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Well. Well. You'll be there. You'll be our featured guest for that talk too. When I first saw you, Mela, is actually when I went down to the New York Pro when it was in Tampa. Oh. And I went to go see Z compete, and that's when I first saw you. And I was down there like, who is that girl? You walked out of there and you had the crowd. I believe you won that show. Yeah. And that was the first time because I saw you and I was like, wait, she's also, you know, sponsor you and Z had the same suit sponsor and you just command. Well, I will say, listen, you found your home in, yeah. in women's physique and in women's bodybuilding, because I don't know anybody else who, and, may, and you know, educate me because uh, I mean, I, 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 this is your division and, but I don't know any other competitor who is dominated in women's physique, but also doing their damn thing in women's bodybuilding. You know, well, you were able to transform for what the category asked for. And it shows because you are top in both divisions. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah. so much. But it's so, so guess, funny. It's just like it was. Yeah, women's like bodybuilding is my home. <laughs> That's the question I was going to ask you. And, you know, and, and for those, what about, the question that I have is, what advice would you give to those who are looking to change, but not looking to change, but are realizing that their home may not necessarily be figure, you know, and they're afraid to build muscle because they think that it's not feminine. What are you looking at? What, are you, what advice would you tell people who their body is just, they want to grow muscle and they want it. They want to change and they're, they're, they're just not for figure. Do it or, you know, how do they get into that? Well, the, thing is that the, the first mindset you have to have is that you can't be afraid to change. Yeah. There are so many competitors. There are so many athletes. Women's physique is a perfect example. I'm like, and it was a perfect example for me. I'm like, I got to a point in 2016, I couldn't hide the muscle anymore. When you are literally in figure, 2016, I was carbless for 10 weeks because I was trying to be as flat as possible. That whole pumping up backstage, I used to come back there and sit down until they told me to come on stage because I couldn't do anything because I had so much density. And when it got to the point that literally my workouts com com were comprised of bands, I had no point of going to the gym because I worked out with bands. I was miserable. And I finally mm -hmm. got to a point where it was just like, why am I trying to stay someplace I don't fit? Right. I don't, my body doesn't fit here. And so that's the whole thing is that you have to be, you have to, you have to not be afraid to transition. And a lot of right. times people are afraid to transition because they're, they're, they're top 10 in figure, but they're not going to be top 10 when they first, yeah. they're afraid. I'm not going to be top 10 if I cross over. So I'm going to stay here because, you know, this is the enemy that at least I know, you know? And so that's the whole thing is that, so I always tell people just like, look, you can still be feminine no matter which division you go into. And that's one of the things I always wanna promote as I've transitioned through the divisions. My muscle makes me beautiful. My muscle is sexy. It brings out more of the femininity of my body. And the reality is that it's all about how you train. You can't train, like, we can't train like the guys do. That doesn't mean we can't train as heavy. That, means, that doesn't mean that we don't beast out, but there's a lot of stuff that guys do that women shouldn't do because we, for us to keep our, our, our shape. And what happens is that people are, a lot of women, they assume, because it's happened in the past, they assume that, oh, for me to cross over, I need to start training like the guys. I need to beast out like the guys. I need to do what the guys are doing. 
And so all of a sudden they start losing their shape. And that's what happens. Mm-hmm. They start losing their shape because they're number one, like you said, they're in a rush. They're trying to cross over, trying to put on what they need to in a hurry. Number two, they're not training smart. You know, people are always like, how did you keep your weight? I train smart. There's certain ways that I there's certain ways that I train. There's certain things that I know I need to do. It's all about form and function. And mm-hmm. I'm not trying to impress the gram. I'm not trying to impress the guys in the gym by trying to do all this stuff. I'm doing what my body needs to do to get the package that I need to get to win. Right. And so that's what it boils down to. I'm like, there are enough of us that are on these stages now. I can't honestly say that for women's bodybuilding because it's it's slowly, it's evolving, but it's a slow process because right. obviously putting on this kind of muscle takes time. But the reality is that you, you're seeing it. You're starting to see it in women's physique. And the problem is that we can't get the women in women's physique who it's their time to cross over. Mm-hmm. To cross over. It's a slow process, but you know, we tell them just like they get on stage, like I used to. Ooh, oh, she's gonna kill it. They get on stage. Yes, yeah, she needs to cross over. We are we always back there. Oh, she's oh, gonna kill it. it. <laughs> she needs to cross over. We're gonna talk to her backstage when she when she's finished. <laughs> but that's the whole thing is that there's so many people they're afraid of the crossover because they're afraid to give up what they've earned. They worked so hard on in that previous division. They're top 10. They can win some shows. They're top five. They know if they cross over, it's, they always feel like, oh, I'm starting from the bottom. So what if you do? You know, because it's going to make you better. You know, when I had to cross over, because I lost, I lost track of my muscle gain. The pandemic made me lose track. What I used to do is that I would lift and I would watch the shows. And as I saw what the women were looking like, in women's physique, I was like, okay, I need to, I need to dial back. I need to dial back. I didn't have that when the pandemic hit. So I'm just lifting, just lifting in denial. I look good. Okay. Oh, this is, everything's coming together. Ignoring people. They're just like, so you crossing over? No, I'm not crossing over. I need to get some of this fluff off. I got on that stage the week before New York Pro. They were like, you know that you don't supposed to be here. <laughs> and when I saw everybody else, I was like, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> and so I crossed over, you know, and I assumed that I wasn't going to fit, but I did. You know, I didn't think I'm, I'm not going to be big enough. And I got there and I was like, this is where I was supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing when I crossed over from women's figure to women's physique. When I did my first show in women's physique, 2017 Toronto Pro, all I kept thinking was like, I'm not going to be big enough. I'm not going to be big enough. I got there at check in. I got there backstage and I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be. And so that's the whole thing is that, and that's what people are not taking advantage of on the pro level. Mm-hmm. Right. Is that, and I'm so thankful they did this, um, is that they finally started allowing us as pros to cross over within the season. Before, remember, you couldn't do that. Whatever you signed up okay. for in the beginning of the season, that's what you have to stay at. Oh, and so wow. that was, that's not there anymore. And so okay. that changed like a long time ago. And a lot of people don't realize that, I'm assuming. Because you're saying, oh, wow. <laughs> no, because I didn't know either. I didn't know, like, you were stuck in that. Yeah. You know, I know, obviously, no. like, if you qualify for the Olympia in that mm-hmm. division, then that's it. You no, can't try to do something you, else. I you thought you had to go back to get your pro card. I thought you had to go back to get your pro card in that division. No. No, no, no. no, no. They you're, do that in other pro, you're pro. Though. Once you're pro, you're pro. But what used to happen is that when you signed up for your membership card, Whatever division you ticked, that's the division you have to compete in that entire year. That's how it used to be. Gotcha. So it was, it's kind of an understanding why people are kind of stuck with this whole thing. No, I've got to stay in this division. But they've changed that years ago, that all you have to do is just request an application for the, the other division. And so you you see that a lot. And yeah. people think, that, oh, it's only happening with women's bodybuilding because they're trying to build it. No, it's for every division. Mm. You can, you can, in the same year, you can compete in whatever division you want to, you know, okay. to figure out where you're supposed to be. And so that's the whole thing. I'm like, that's what it is. A lot of people don't, I feel like a lot of it is that people are unaware of some of the changes because they don't, you know, if it's not talking about, you know, a show or whatever, they're not paying attention to the details that are coming out from the league itself. But that's what it is. It's just you can't be afraid. You've got to try. And then you, you figure out what you need to do once you try and so that's the whole thing. But, you know, people get so caught up with that whole, you know, I'm going to lose my status. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to be able to compete at that level. 
then maybe it's not the sport for you. Ooh. You know, because it's, I'm like, it's always right. whatever it took for you to get here. Mm -hmm. You, it's not going to help you get to the next level. Right. And that's the biggest problem with this entire sport. Whatever it took for that person to win that local show, they're doing that exact same thing when they get to nationals. You know, and then they at nationals, but they think, oh, you know, I won overall in nationals. You're going to get slaughtered in the pro level, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. You know, but you go ahead and keep doing what you did to win nationals on the pro level. Right. Those pros, whatever it took for you to win that pro show, you better bring another level if you're trying to go to the Olympia and do something. Right. And that's the whole thing is that where too many people are afraid of change. Mm -hmm. And that's what this sport, that's what this sport is built on. Bodybuilding is a transformation. It's a never ending transformation. It's a never ending right. change of your body, making yourself more better, no matter what. Right. <laughs> you know, I had to fly it in there. <laughs> but that's what it is. And so for me, I love the idea of transforming my body. So that's the transition through the divisions was never a problem for me, even though even now I still get DMs. So are you going to go back to women's physique? Why? Why would I? You know, no. when I wasn't doing well, like the last year when I, I didn't do well, I was having a really bad season. So you're going to go back? No, I'm going to pick myself up. I'm going to make the changes I need to make. And I'm going to keep pushing in this division to become the best. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. It's about change. We need to start telling people it's a never ending process. You can't try to hang on to what you used to do, thinking that it's going right. to take you to the next level. But anyway, so. You are absolutely right. Um, so when when did you cross over from what what year did you cross over from figure to uh, women's physique? And then the year that you crossed over from women's physique to women's body I mean, so I this, but they don't <laughs> no i'm like i crossed over um i did two shows in 2016 in women's figure um placed well top five placed okay. top five but my feedback was always like you got a lot of muscle Mayla. <laughs> you got a lot of muscle and the way that i was training it was like you know why am i doing this so i spent the rest of 2016 part of 2017 i crossed over in 2017 Mm -hmm. Did two shows, qualified for the Olympia. So competed, 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 pandemic happened. And I was already struggling with the same issue I was struggling with when I was in figure, trying to keep it that I wasn't too much muscle density, too much definition, too much. And so I crossed over to women's bodybuilding in 2020. So I did a show in women's physique. Feedback was just like, and they were a little Gary. Gary was one of the individuals who told me, it was like, Mayla, you got a lot of muscle. You might want to cross with women's figure. I mean, women's, women's physique. And we've had enough interactions. I always tell him, look, I need you to have real talk with me. And literally what he said when I said, hey, what do I need to do to do better in the next women's physique show? He's like, Mayla, you have reached the point. It is time for you to leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> and over to the next division. You know, but he made it clear. And so that's the one thing that I really respect about him. He was like, there was nothing wrong with your package. There's nothing wrong with your look. He said, your suit, your total package, everything looked better. You are too big for the division. You are too muscular and you, are, you have too much density to compete well at this division with the current guidelines. And I have to respect that. So I was like, okay, pack my bag and I move to the next division. And so that's what it is. So 2017 is when I crossed over to women's, um, women's physique. And it's also mm -hmm. the first time I started traveling to the um, Olympia. And then 2020 is when I crossed over to women's bodybuilding. So I haven't looked back because I'm home. Yes. Oh, well, that you are. I mean, <laughs> I, you looked amazing for, you know, Olympia, but my God, Rising Phoenix, I was like, holy crap. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I was I was having some issues coming into the Olympia and you know how it is. You think you, you know, I can pull it out and I can pull it out and I can pull it out. And I was I was I thought, but then those last 12 hours, it was just like it was just a total breakdown. And it was, you know, there's nothing you can do at that point. You know, it was just like it is what it is. And so, but yes, I'm like the Rising Phoenix was that was that was I'm, I'm that was telling me. you, I was looking at you and then I was looking at Andre and I was like. I don't know. <laughs> and so I was, I'm like, I was excited. So I'm just like, you know, we'll see this year. I'm like, cause I'm kind of on the fence of whether or not I'm going to, I'm going to continue competing, but I'm just what? like, yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Breaking oh, no, news. No, you, guys was... <laughs> you heard it from us first. I know. It's like breaking news. You know, this is the first season. I'm like every year um, after I finish the season, I, you know, I have reflection time and see, you know, get that hunger, get that fire and everything. And so this is the first year that I've, it's crossed my mind or maybe I need to, uh, maybe I need to sit down. So I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent, but this is the first time it's, you know, the thought has crossed my mind and everything, but anyway, but um, yes, it's, um, you know, I put so much into it um, last year and everything that I had went through with the surgeries and the passing of my father and my sister and everything. And so right. it was a lot. And so based on them pushing me, it was just like the, the the woman that we see, the competitor that we see, hasn't stepped on stage yet. And I can honestly say the competitor that I know I'm capable of didn't step on the Rising Phoenix stage, which is why I'm still on the fence, because I know that I'm not done. I know that there's, I know that there's a little more work that needs to be done. There's a little more that I can capture. So, you know, but, you know, it's work. It takes a lot to continue evolving and changing, to put in that sacrifice, to put in that time, you right. know? And so, and the journey, the journey is, it's hard and it, it gets lonely sometimes because some, even those who are in the sport, you know, sometimes they don't understand, especially, and there's no respect to any other divisions, but I feel that I can actually speak on this with truth. Mm -hmm. Every division that I've crossed into, it's become harder to try to become one of the best. And women's bodybuilding, I can honestly say, I have the respect that I have for this division is just tenfold now that I'm in the division because it is it is so much harder. It, it takes so the, the 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 smallest of things have the biggest impact on what you bring to the stage. And unfortunately for me, because I've been so bet, I'm so new in the division. You know, I always tell people that. It's like, oh, you've been, yeah, but I've been transitioning through divisions. So, you know, 2020, it was like, oh my God, you went to Olympia, you played sport. Yeah, that was my second show as a women's bodybuilder. I'm still green. There's still a lot to learn. That next season, I had to learn the hard way that the way I used to train as a physique competitor was not going to cut it as a woman's bodybuilder. And so last year I had to, in that process, it, it was a lot. You know, and so if I'm ready to pick up that mantle, and that's where I'm at right now, I'm like, as much as it took me through, you know, I'm like, okay. do I have what it takes? Do I have that energy? Do I have that passion, that fire? Because you, you guys know how it is. Sometimes you don't feel like getting up and doing that cardio. Sometimes you don't feel like doing that freaking leg, leg day. You don't feel like doing it, but you know you have to. Right. And there's nobody else that's going to push you. You've got to do it. You've got to tell yourself, get up and get it done. Right. So that's what I always have to tell. Do I have enough self-motivation to do what I need to do? Not to just show up, but to show out. And that's what I tell people. Right. I'm not trying to do it just for the experience. I'm trying to be the best in the world. And those who compete, if you're not trying to do that, then why are you doing this? Yeah. Why get your pro card? Why are you not trying to? I'm just, I'm just honored to be on the stage. Heffy, you need to be trying to beat me. You know, I'm like, yeah. not, not, I'm just honored to be on stage. Yes, be 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 thankful because this is a rare opportunity to get on right. the pro level, to be top 10, to get on the Olympia stage, to period, to be top 10 at the Olympia. That is such a jewel of a moment. Right. But you still should be trying to be focused on being the best. The best. You know? right. so, anyway, but no, I agree. I agree. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, but, you know, again, we, we really want to just thank you so much for giving us so much of your time, all these gems and, you know, letting us know We're gonna how have this on. thing was. Uh, you know, oh, no, you definitely you got to come back. You definitely <laughs> got to come back because we, we got some keeping it real with Mela. If you're okay with doing this, you know, every so often coming on and, you know, you know what, what keeping it real segment. You know what I mean? Like the, the platform is yours because I feel like we don't have enough of that. I, and it's I, that would be awesome. You know what? I'm I am so I'm so honored that you guys invited me on the show. You know, so I'm like I and I would be it would be truly a blessing. It would be an honor to come back. 
you know, and talk to you guys again and again. So I'm like, it is, it is yes, yes, totally yes, yes. So mm. We do need more, we do need more of this. We do need more of this out there to, yeah. you know, and we need more of this out here being spoken by women. It needs to be through the feminine voice. So they right. understand. So what you guys are doing is, is fabulous. So, Thank you know. You. We mm-hmm. appreciate it. We really do. Um, but of course, before we go, of course, we all want to hear words of wisdom from you. Uh, you know, anyone who is looking to get into the sport, anyone who's already in the sport, what can you leave them with? Uh, for those who are looking to get into the sport, the women that are looking to get into the sport, one thing, the one key thing that I, I need for you to take away from all of this is that you don't have to sacrifice your femininity to do this. There, this is not a man's sport. Everybody, women and men, have the exact same muscles. So it doesn't make you more manly that you develop the muscles that you were born with, you know. So just, if this is what you love to do, if you love to, if you love to, to train and you are proud of the accomplishments of what you transform, then jump into the sport, but find where your body needs to play, go. And compete on that level. But if there's a level that you wanna be on and you're not ready for it, then transition through the divisions like I did, you know, or like Lou did, take the time off and build so that you have what that division is looking for. Those who are already competing, there's nothing wrong with change. And the truth of the matter is your destiny that you are dreaming to achieve might be through that doorway of change. I always wanted to go to the Olympia. That was never going to happen to me in figure because I had attributes, my dominant attributes from more women's physique. But the second I embraced that change and crossed over, two shows later, I qualified for the Olympia. I'm like, the reality is, is that this is a journey. This is not a sprint. This is a journey. And everybody's journey is different. And you need to respect your journey. You can be motivated by everybody's journey around you. But you need to have real talk with your own inner self and respect that journey that you need to be on. That's the only way that this sport will pour into you the memories and the the accomplishments that you really are seeking. Anything else? It's going to be empty vessels. I love that. That was so well said. Thank you. Yes, thank you so thank much. You. Um, and you guys, and thank you for having me on. I'm just like this was um, like. Let's keep your notifications on because we're gonna be reaching back out to you. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no problem, honey. I'm gonna oh, be honest sure. with you guys. <laughs> this conversation <laughs> has me has me kind of leaning to getting back on that stage again. I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like. You know, I'm just like this, this, this community that, that women's bodybuilding and well, the, the sport, the feminine sport aspect, the, the females in this sport of women of bodybuilding. I need to stop putting women in front of that in bodybuilding. I'm like, it's, you, it, it can't compare. I've been in a lot of different sports and this is, there's a camaraderie that's in here that is, is second to none. Yeah, and right. so we need to continue shoring each other up. We need to continue educating those who are fans, those who are um, curious. We need to make people to start understanding that this is a beautiful sport for women because women who do this sport are beautiful. We're feminine, we're beautiful, we're sexy, and we need for people to understand that. So, yes, yes I'm excited. Well, thank you, as are we. Yes, thank you, as are we. Yes, don't go nowhere yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want to close this out? Uh, yes. Yes. So again, Mayla, thank you so much for giving us some of your time and sharing some gems. Uh, everyone, thank you again for the continued support. Uh, as you can see, we're still constantly growing bit by bit. Thanks to you guys. Um, we will do our best to keep you guys updated. Of course, we are in a new season. So as shows come out, 
We will update you guys on placings and anything beyond the barbell on stage and off the stage. So, Thank you. Guys.